Hi there, this is Anna Aspinas from Anna Aspinas Designs and in this video tutorial I want to show you how to use a photo blends clipping mask. You can see on my screen I have a layout that I have created and the focal photo is an image that has been clipped to what we call a clipping mask. Clipping masks can be used in both Adobe Photoshop or Elements. They can also be used in JASK Paint Shop Pro and they're designed to be used with the clipping mask function which I intend to demonstrate later on in this tutorial. If we just take a look in our layers panel you can see that we have this image and it's clipped to this underlying photo blends layer. If I turn off the visibility of that photo layer you can see that photo blend clipping mask underneath and when we clip the image which is shown by this indentation and this kind of corner downward facing arrow that means that the image is clipped to the mask and it allows the image to be blended nicely and seamlessly into the background paper. Over the years I have created a variety of photo blends clipping masks and they can be found in the Anna Aspinus Design Store at oscraps.com. These masks are delivered in a variety of formats. The smaller ones are delivered in both PNG with a transparent background or in .abr file format. This allows you to load them into your brushes panel and then use them with your paintbrush tool. The larger masks are usually delivered only in .png format and they are designed to be opened into your workspace and then dragged onto your layouts. And then more recently I have been delivering my masks in .psd file format. I think this provides you with greater flexibility for modifications um, because as you can see with this Snowy Photo Blends number 3 file we have four different layers and each of these layers can be manipulated individually and by manipulated I mean it can be modified in the sense that they can be recolored, you can apply blending modes from the layers panel, you can adjust the opacity or you can turn the, the visibility of those layers on and off. You also have the option with the move tool selected, you can see the bounding box appear, this allows you then to rotate those layers if you want to and even move those layers. So let's recreate this layout and I can show you these photo blends clipping masks in action. So I'm going to go to File, New and create a new page. I'm going to make sure that my width is 12 inches, my height is also 12 inches, resolution of 300 and color mode RGB color and then click OK. And then we need to select a background for our image. It's always nice to start off with a pre-designed background. So I'm going to go to File, Open and navigate to Art Play Palette Neige and I'm going to select Artsy Paper number 4 from the presented options. I'm going to double click on that file to open it and then with the Move tool selected I'm going to drag that image onto my background paper and position so that all edges are aligned and then we'll close down that original. And then we need to bring our mask into the picture so I'm going to select and click on that file and then in the layers panel select the first layer or click on the first layer in the layers panel hold down the shift button on your keyboard click on the last layer to select all layers in the layers panel and then with the move tool selected drag all of those layers onto our new document or canvas and you can see we have two kind of harsh edges and then we have the more blended artsy edges so I'm going to place my file accordingly. We'll close out that PSD layered file and then we will move our new layout next to the one that I've already created. So the next step here is to add some photos. So again I'm going to go to File, Open 
and then navigate to this folder and you can see I've already pre-selected two images for use here so I'm going to select the first one hold down my shift key and select the second one these are not the best quality images um, they are taken with my iPhone outside in the freezing weather um, out by the reservoir from where I live so you can see that there are a few dots on there but hopefully when we've blended them into our background we won't be able to see those marks that were clearly on the lens of the camera. So we want to select the layout first of all and then we'll go over to our layers panel and we want to make sure that we have the photo blends clipping mask layer selected. This basically means that when we move the photo into position over our mask the image will be dropped actually on top of the mask in the layers panel. If we have one of these snow layer layers selected then when we move that photo across onto our layout you can see that it is dropped above the snow and we then have to move it down the layers panel. We can go ahead and move that across into position and then once you've got it so that the image covers the mask completely then we go to layer create clipping mask. Alternatively you can press Alt Control plus G on your keyboard or if you're working in Adobe Photoshop Elements you would press Control G. And you can see that that photo now conforms nicely to the mask and immediately blends it into the background. And at this point I'm holding down the shift button on my, on my keyboard in Adobe Photoshop if you are working in Adobe Photoshop Elements you would want to make sure that you have that constrained proportions box checked and then you are able to resize that image and rotate it as needed and once you have it how you want it click on the check mark to accept the transformation. So go ahead and just close out that original photo. This one we're going to go ahead and minimize so that we can see our original layout and at this point we can make some modifications to our photo. If you find that your photo doesn't completely cover your mask you can use the techniques that are outlined in my Anna Blends live workshop um, to modify that mask area or to modify the photo area. You can also go ahead and brighten up that image, provide some contrast. So we're going to go to Image Adjustments Levels and then you can see we're presented with this histogram. I'm going to bring in those shadows to bump up the contrast and then bring in the highlights to make it also a little brighter. You can also play with this middle lever until you have it how you want it and then click OK and you can see that we have the snow coming in which are these layers on top of the image we can turn those off if we want to of course we've got this bright blue sky um, which is not conducive to the snow but the beauty of digital we have that creative license to get away with what we want so I'm just going to go with the flow for now we'll switch these layers back on and you can see that they do help to mask that mark that was on my original photo so a few of the things that you can do here, you can duplicate some of these layers so you can make that snow more intense or you can bring the snow over onto different areas of your layout, you can move it around, you can rotate it if you want to, do you have it how you want it, you can use the eraser tool and select a brush, let's go to my brushes panel, select one of these brushes, you can go ahead and you can modify some of the layers by deleting some of those snowflakes that are coming down. Go ahead and close that out. You can also recolor some of those snowflakes. So if we select one of these layers we can go to edit, fill, ensure that you have that preserved transparency box checked and then go ahead and select a color and I'm thinking that maybe kind of a fun pink would be good. So let's click OK, click OK, and now you can see 
that our snow is now pink. And this is where we can have some fun because we can go up to our, the top of our layers panel and then start playing with some of the blending modes. So maybe hard light um, kind of yields a much lighter pink. Um, vivid light's always a fun one. Um, so you can see we've got some pink and then it kind of um, varies and comes to white. We've got some pink where it hits the color again. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that process. Select a new layer, go to edit, fill, and then this time I'm going to go with kind of a light blue. Maybe that will work. Click OK. And then again, go and apply some blending modes. That's pen light, which is kind of fun. Um, before I like the vivid light. Do like the vivid light because you get this kind of rainbow effect um, depending on where the snow hits the image. And then you can also go ahead and change the opacity if you want to. So a few ways that you can adjust and modify some of those layers that exist within the photo blends clipping mask. If I wanted to use a different clipping mask I could go ahead and let's turn off the visibility of that photo layer. Drag it down to the bottom. I'm going to select all of those snow layers in the layers panel and delete them and then go to file open and navigate to my clipping mask folders. Snow photo blends and I'm going to go ahead and pick out number three which is the one I believe I used in the layout. Again, select all those layers, move the clipping mask into position, and of course we can turn the visibility of that photo layer back on, move it on top of our photo blends, increase the size of our photo so that it covers the, in, the entire area of the photo blends, accept the transformation, go to layer, create clipping mask, and then you can see we can move it up or down, move it into position, and then again we can repeat that process, edit, fill, color, OK, OK the vivid light blending mode. We'll decrease the opacity slightly. You can see how the different snow flakes react with the underlying photo layer and then go to edit fill. We'll do this one pink this time. Doesn't require too much um, too much forethought just kind of playing with the tools here and then apply vivid light and so you can see where it's a little bit pink down here at the bottom as I move it around the canvas you can see how how the color changes and we can go ahead and just pull that down slightly to recreate a slightly different but very similar look and then we can go and close this one down and um, I completed this layout simply by adding a few additional images so the frames I got from the template that is released with this Art Play Palette Neige and the Snowy Photo Blends. I'm going to go to File, Open, select the Artsy Layered Template and open the template into the workspace. And I'm just going to use the frames and the journaling box area. So in the Layers panel I want to select the first frame layer hold down the shift button on my keyboard, select the last frame and then of course select that text box and then move those onto my canvas and you can see that I've dragged the frame frames beneath one of the snow layers so we want to drag those up and drop them at the top of the palette. Close that out and then we can bring in our other photos so the other photo I had was this one. I'm, with, I'm going to select the Move tool from the Tools panel, 
ensure that I have the auto select box selected in my options at the top of my screen if you're working in Adobe Photoshop that will be located at the bottom of your screen if you're working in elements we're going to select the mask layer to which we want to clip the photo drag the image on top so that the image is brought in directly above the photo clipping mask we want to slightly rotate that image click OK and then this time go to Alt Control G to clip the photo to the mask and then we can go to image adjustments levels we'll just boost the color and the contrast the brightness and the contrast and then click OK which will close down the original photo and then I didn't have any other photos that I wanted to use so this time I'm going to select some papers from Art Play Palette Neige and this time we'll go with this one and maybe this one so this time I am clicking on one of the papers and holding down the control button on my keyboard and then clicking open to open those into my workspace and again we're going to use the move tool with the auto select feature click on the mask to which we want to clip our paper and then just drag the paper over into position go to layer create clipping mask and then you can move that around until you have it how you want it close it out and then do the same with this bottom frame And again we'll go to Alt Control G and then I know I'm not going to add any text at this point so I'm going to go ahead and delete that text box if you wanted to add text you could and then I'm going to complete this page just with a couple of embellishments I'm going to go to file open and grab a button from the elements folder I like this pearlized one so I'm going to bring that button in. I'm going to deselect the auto select feature at the top there. Just um, some of the smaller elements can be a bit tricky to grab onto and you can end up grabbing all the different kinds of layers that you lay out if you're not careful. So I like to deselect that option when I'm dealing with small elements. So bring that button down, go to layer, layer style, drop shadow. Just bring that in slightly click OK, close that button out and then I'm going to go and grab one of the threads that I'm also releasing um, with this Art Play Palette Neige. Let's see we have the button threads number one and I'm going to go with that first one. With the move tool selected drag it in you also have the option of being able to load these threads into your brushes panel by loading the ABR and using it with the paintbrush tool. I like to use these urban stitches as I call them and threads in black. I tend to just kind of pull them in in the PNG format. And then finally I'm going to complete this page with a title. I'll go to C Word Art and then I'm just going to look through and find something that would be good. Um, gaze along is a good one or maybe take it all in. So go ahead, double click to open and then move it onto your layout and drag into position. And that's how I completed that page. Super easy. The flexibility of the photo blends clipping masks really allows you to do some fun techniques to kind of elevate those photos and make them look good in your photo albums. So that's it for this week. Um, a few tips on using photo blends, clipping masks, and hopefully I will see you again soon.